Right, you ready? Yeah, so where would this go? Where would this go? This is going to go on uh, LinkedIn, uh, m most, mostly LinkedIn, but Twitter, YouTube, all the rest of it. You're live, by the way. So, okay. Say, say hello to everyone. Hello. So, <laughs> just had a quick uh, catch up with the informal session here at the IFPA stand. Just introduce yourself to a few thousand people. Okay, <laughs> of my closest friends. Hi, I'm Bonnie Estes. I'm the Vice President of Innovation for IFPA, and I work in a number of different areas. Uh, I do a lot of work in CEA. Uh, I do a lot of work in different kinds of plant breeding techniques and just work in technology all the way through the supply chain for the produce industry. And just talk about the seminar that, that you had a couple of... Oh, I, can't even, I can't even remember what day it is today. I, uh, it's Saturday. I think it was day before Thursday. yesterday. It was Thursday. Yeah, so talk, Thursday. To, to, who, who was on that panel? Because that was very impressive. Yeah, it was a great panel. So we did a panel at, uh, looking at... Uh, controlled environment agriculture and uh, we talked about where are we now, what's happening with collaboration and what's the future and my panelists were Michael Yates from Walmart which was excellent yeah, to have brilliant. a retailer, yeah, I was very happy to have Michael on, Katie Sewell from Bowery, Abby Fryer from Bright Farms and Mark Oshima from Aerofarm. So some of the top companies in the industry that are really plowing yeah, yeah. forward and making this happen. To, to listen to you then and today, I think you're in a, in a really mercurial um, position because you can, you can sort of see what's going on and sort of shape it up. This, this whole area, um, let's use that, the, 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 um, the, the, the body analogy. Um, as a business, is this a toddler or is this a, a grown up? There's some businesses here that have been going for 200 years, 180 years. What, where do you think our, our sector, or let's call it vertical farming for our European sector, where is it? Is, is it a mature sector or is it still a baby? It's preteen. Is it preteen? Preteen. So okay. a little obnoxious, a little full of itself sometimes. Yep. But um, no, I, I would say, you know, when you look at um, a lot, really less than 10 years, you know, people have been working on this and a lot of the technology has been developed and a lot of the early farms have developed all their own technology. There was no supply, you know, industry bringing them things and they're just starting to build these big farms. And so I think it's, uh, I think it's very early in the technology development. It's very early in the crops that we're growing and it's very early in, in retail and consumer acceptance. And there's a bit that you just said here, which rang so true blending you think there's going to be a blended approach that there won't be standalone units perhaps that there'll be conventional farms might get that there might be integrated or yeah i think it's um i think there'll be a there will be some standalone large very large scale farms that are being built by people like our farms and plenty but one of the things that i'm starting to see happening is just looking at how do we grow with less resources and so what is all the technology we can bring to bear for all the different ways of growing. And so one example is for germination. So if you put a seed and you germinate it, that nobody does that in the ground. You know? but, um, but if you were an outdoor grower and you had some special seeds that needed to be germinated in a certain way and you wanted to germinate a lot of them really fast, you could have an indoor farm that just did your germination. And then you could take it out into a greenhouse and then out into the field or you know, or just grow it in a, in a more traditional greenhouse. And so I think there's that part of it where you're going to have, you're going to use vertical farms for different things. And then I think also we talked about with outdoor growers, I think especially in places like California where we're starting to have heat issues and less water, then a lot of those growers, they're, they're producers. That's, you know, they're not tied to any one way of producing. They, they produce for the industry. So they're looking at what might I need to do to mitigate my risk. And some of that might be, let me put an indoor farm in some other part of the country so that I can make sure I can supply to my retailers. Yeah. And, and you also gave that really good example that uh, some US retailers may want to have a farm next to the RDC Regional yeah. Distribution Center because actually everyone's worked out it's too expensive to have it um, near to a city, although that, that's where the, the population is, but the land cost is going to be high, uh, you're going to have water, water yeah. to, to actually having it uh, over at the distribution center is going to make more, more logical sense. Yeah, yeah, I think people are starting to look and as, well I think what's so great about that particular example is that that is uh, an example of collaboration throughout the chain. And so when you start looking at what are we trying to do throughout the whole chain to get you know great produce to people, and you start talking to the retailers, and they're going to tell you something different than oh, let's put a farm right next to New York City. You know, they're going to say no, no, no. We can get this on the shelf in 24 hours if you put it next to our distribution. Yeah, center. yeah, yeah. Make, makes sense. So
So are you positive about the future of this sector? I am. I'm very positive about it. I think it's it's like a lot of early stage stuff, which I've worked on my whole career. I love early stage stuff. Is that I think there's a there's been a lot of money that's been put in, and so there's some question about you know how that's going to all work out for for investors. But I think as we look at things like. Um, having enough food in different parts of the world and with climate change and with wanting to grow with less inputs and more sustainably, I think this is a great answer. It's not the only answer. We'll do other things. We'll keep growing outside. California agriculture is not going away. But I think we'll continue to develop CEA in ways that it makes sense um, to allow us to grow really great food and get it to consumers. And, and we must just promote the IFPA and, and this fantastic Global Produce and, and Floral Show. Presumably, um, if people join the IFPA, they'll be able to get even more of your knowledge, understanding, yeah. and, and that whole network. And it's not just America, it's, it's globally. Yeah, it's global. One thing I want to mention is we just started, um, this was our first meeting, uh, CEA Council. So myself and Abby Pryor from Bright Farms are running a council where we're bringing people up together throughout the whole supply chain. And we're gonna work with the industry to help solve the problems that the group together in collaboration couldn't solve with one company. So I think that's an example of how important IFPA sees that CEA is and that we really need to work together as a group throughout the whole supply chain to make this work. And just to top and tail it, there'll be a lot of people that will want to hear more from you and the IFPA is it okay if people uh, get in contact with you from UK, Europe oh, sure. uh, for, for, for conferences, for events like, like, like this? Or might yeah. be a bit, we're, we're one big community yeah. and, and we need to network because we all want to find a solution and that's going to be to benefit the consumer and give them good top quality food at an affordable price. So that's okay for everyone to contact you. Yeah, the LinkedIn is actually the easiest place to find me. I'm very active. I just recently wrote two articles on CEA, one's on breeding and one's on the biggest problems in CEA. So those are on my LinkedIn page. People People can look at those and um, just get in touch with me with any other questions. Excellent. Favorite fresh produce? Oh my gosh. Um, all of it? Uh, <laughs> really perfect in season cantaloupe is probably my favorite. Oh, oh well done. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you.